Week 15 is here, and if you're watching this video, you better be in the playoffs. If you're that bad of a degenerate that you are just watching fantasy rankings when you're not even in the playoffs to see how you can avoid last place, brother, you need to just worry about next year. Like, come, what did you do this year to where you need to worry about the last place punishment? I'm not making this video for you, just so you know. You might need it. But I'm talking about the I'm talking to the winners out there, not you who's gonna have to go sit in Waffle House for 24 hours and eat your way out of it or IHOP, whatever the fuck it is. Week 15, this is when the playoffs start. Unless you're in a week 14 playoff league, I probably gave you some bad advice next, last week. But we're on to the next one. What matters is here now, today, this moment. So let's lock in, let's strap up, let's talk about some running backs, let's talk about some wide receivers, and let's talk about how to get a fucking W. Here we go. <laughs> All year, I've been saying I don't need a hand. I don't need to uh, give you a walk, a stroll through the top 12 because you know the deal. But in the playoffs, you might want to hear about a little bit of everyone. So I'll try and go through every little stage, every tier there is. Starting off with Kyron Williams, I don't have much to say besides the dude's a fucking monster. He's him. He's a beast. He can't be stopped. He's getting over 20 touches a game. Even when he doesn't score, you can probably count for him to have well over 100 total yards. He had 100 yards just on the ground last week. It, it doesn't matter who he plays, not to mention the fact that Washington sucks. I shouldn't be yapping about him. If you have him, you're probably already starting him no matter what. But he deserves a shout-out. Uh, the Dolphins running back room, they need attention. I fucked up last week. I said A-Chan was over Moster. I didn't just say that. I put them, like, tears apart. I had A-Chan well, I'm going to say A-Chain and A-Chan. Too bad. Get used to it. I had A-Chain well above Moster. That's on me. And my rebuttal, the way I'm counteracting that is I don't know. I don't know. My opinion is A-Chain's never going to get 20 carries, all right? That's just not how Miami uses him. I don't even know if he's fully capable of that. The dude is always banged up. By the time this video is out, he might be hurt, okay? So let me also get that out of the way. If there's anything in this video that kind of contradicts what you're seeing in the news because I can't make this the exact moment injuries are happening. You can find the updated ranking status, my opinion, at bdg.co where I will update the rankings based on injuries, news, whatever. But assuming they both play, the way I see it is they're both RB1s coming off a tough loss, and this is good enough offense to where you can start both of them no matter what. I doubt there's many of you out there that have both of them on your roster, so you have to choose which. But even if you are... They're good enough, and this team is good enough, especially going on to face the Jets, who have a good pass defense, but the run defense is very lackluster. I'm willing to start both of them no matter what. And not to the same exact tier, but the same applies to the Lions running backs. Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery. Unfortunately for one of them, whoever you have, the biggest differentiator for them too is probably game script. Unless it's like a neutral game script where Denver... Denver being a good matchup, it could occur. It's a close game. They can use both of them. But if it's a positive game script in the sense of the lines are up, they're probably just going to use Monty to push the pile, eat the clock, run the damn ball. If they're trailing, switch it up, throw in the receiving back, throw in Mr. Gibbs. I think against Denver, this will be a good enough matchup where both of them can eat, both of them will perform well, and both of them will give you enough to be satisfied in week 15 of the fantasy playoff. A uh, little rapid fire. Brian Robinson, if he's back in full, he's playable. All right, so keep up keep checking the rankings to see where i refresh brian robinson but he's rb 13 on the year he's top 20 in points per game and he's been very underrated this season i have to see that he's practicing a full he's 100 percent ready to go not just oh he's playing he's limited that's not the same but b rob's been the most underrated back this season i'm gonna trust him again when it matters most so check the rankings to see where the fuck i put him moss that's another one i still think you should trust I know it's been fucking two three weeks now where he's just let you down and i just keep saying volume 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 and we don't really, me and you both, volume doesn't fucking matter unless you actually produce and you do something with that volume. Input doesn't matter unless you get a good output, Zach Moss, all right? But the input's damn pretty, okay? Still expected to get 20 touches. Still is Zach Moss of the early year. He still that has that in the tank. Jonathan Taylor's probably not going to play. Pittsburgh is a favorable matchup. They have a bottom 15 run defense, okay? He's had two bad games. He's been this. He's still the same player we've trusted early in the year. He's due. All right, I don't like throwing out due logic in fantasy playoffs, but he's due. Joe Mixon, shout out to Mixon, man. I, I don't know what else to say. He's RB5 on the year. Do I think he's that good? No, nope, but it's the opposite of Zach Moss. I don't believe in Mixon's input, but his output is damn good, so shout out to him. Brees Hall, look, he scores. He scored last week, shout out to him, and he is very underrated in the receiving game. He's had three straight games of eight-plus targets. 
But if you look at the ground, as a pure rusher, I believe in Brees Hall, the player. But the rushing stats are not there. It's been, I think, seven games, eight games maybe. Yeah, it's been eight games in a row where he has not gone above 50 rushing yards. That's not good, okay? That's not a good stat. Luckily, the receiving game is enough. He's good enough a player where he could just break off any moment, and you're obviously going to start him no matter what. He's an RB, very strong RB2. I'm still a little hesitant. Uh, the Steelers running backs we could talk about. They've both been pretty disappointing the past three weeks. I'll say three weeks ago, it's like, damn, both these guys are churning. Najee's getting touchdown. Najee's getting 100-yard games. Jalen Warren's looking like the next Austin Eckler. And then it just went trickled. Ever since Matt Canada dipped, I'm not even going to get into the whole theoretical how good the Steelers are as a whole. But ever since Matt Canada dipped, these running backs are not performing the same at least in relevance to us when it comes to fantasy. Don't love that, but I do love the matchup. The Colts are like a bottom five run defense. They give up the fourth most fantasy points to running backs. I still like them as fringe RB2s, and I'm going to trust them one more time. I, I highly doubt you have many better options. Kenneth Walker, he's kind of a tough one to grade. I like Kenneth Walker in his second game back. That's the good news. He's getting to ramped up, and this Seattle seems desperate. Like, they need a fucking win, but the Eagles, even though they've been slipping, they're still a top five run defense, and this is probably going to be similar game script for Seattle that they had last week. Regardless of if Gino in, regardless of if Drew Locke is in, I expect them to be trailing, and I expect them to be able to exploit the bad pass defense of the Eagles, and I just don't see running the ball being the way the Seattle team is competing, especially a good run defense when the back end is very approachable for DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and JSN. Uh, talk about the Ravens running backs. I'm officially believing in Keaton Mitchell over Gus Edwards. I don't know if I'm getting caught up in the moment. I don't know if it's recency bias and he really hasn't produced like him, but I'm going to compare Keith Mitchell to be the knockoff version of Devon A. Chain. It's kind of weird to compare both of these guys when they we literally had like a four or five game sample size of them both. But Keith Mitchell's that explosive. He's that speedy and he could fill in that type of role for Baltimore like A. Chain is for Miami where he's just the explosive guy they need to make a play when they're marching down the field, when they're at midfield. He's probably not going to get the goal line work, and that's why I still think Gus is a playable flex play. But you saw last week, that motherfucker's worthless when he don't score a touchdown. I've been preaching that for a while. I'm not victory lapping because the dude scores a lot of touchdowns. He's on a very good team. So while you might be worthless out of score, if you score a lot, doesn't matter. You will then be worth something. So I don't know. I think they're both worthy flex plays, but if you had to pick one, I am rocking with Keaton because I think he's the better player and he has the much bigger play potential and he's not bad out of the backfield compared to Gus. Another split backfield. I don't really know what to tell you to do with Aaron Jones, man. I don't want to play him, okay? Even if he does play, even if he's not unlimited, like that's that's the thing. Is he going to play? If he plays, is he going to be limited? Is he going to look at the Aaron Jones as a week one? It's just too many ifs, ands, and buts for me to tell you in week 15 of the fantasy playoffs that I trust him. I wouldn't want to take that risk, and I feel like I like to play at risk in fantasy football. I don't think I'm risk adverse. I like to go big or go home, but it doesn't feel like a home run is in Aaron Jones' bag. It feels like we might get a stolen base at best, all right? There is no swing and win at all. It's like swing and just kind of do your job of getting 12 points. That feels like the upside. I don't think Aaron Jones has any sneaky 25, 28-point bags, games in his bag that you're just going to be pissed at your bench. Not to mention Tampa's run defense, better than most for damn sure. Uh, keep an eye on the Minnesota backfield. I, I don't really know if there's much there. If Madison's out, Tyler Chandler is a worth a flex play, but there's there's nothing I'm drooling over here, if I'm being honest. We can move on to the wide receivers. There's two other guys I feel like we should just talk about in running backs. Ezekiel Elliott. I think if you got him in your lineup last week and he got you to playoffs, you should be happy of that. And I know I'm going out of order here, and I'm not trying to you know, diss him when I have him over a couple of these guys like the Packers running backs, but... Just by any, by all means, don't expect Zeke you saw on Thursday Night Football. This is a much tougher matchup versus the Chiefs who are coming off back-to-back -back losses. He's still relevant, and he's still startable in these lineups because he's a good receiving back, and they're going to be down and trailing and throwing the goddamn ball a lot, but Zeke scoring, not something I'm banking on. Moving on to the wide receivers. Enough yapping. Enough fucking yapping. Also, before I get to the wide receivers, again, if you need help, I know this week fucking matters for a lot of you. It matters for me. Ask your questions in the comments, at me in the Discord. If you're a member, go to the bdge.co ranking so you could see any updated rankings that might have changed from when you're watching this video. This is a week where you have to stay up to date with my current rankings where you can't take everything I say in this video verbatim for granted or for exact measures. Shit will happen. There's a lot of injuries. There will be updates, so stay updated. All right, wide receivers. I don't even know why I'm bringing this up, but it needs to be talked about. Michael Pittman is my 
wide receiver 11. I think that's very respectable, and I think Michael Pittman deserves that, and I don't really need to be bringing this up, but the ECR, the expert consensus ranking, so that means every person ever that ranks fantasy players combine those rankings has Michael Pittman at wide receiver four. Like, come on, what, the fourth best wide receiver? Like, I know Michael Pittman's good. All right, but are we really throwing him over Tyreek? Even if he is banged up, even if he's 80% of Tyreek, I'm still taking him over Pittman, over AJ, over CD, over Amon Ra, over Diggs. Even though Diggs has been quiet, I'm still going to take him over Pittman. I don't know. It doesn't feel necessary to, for me to rant about, but just felt like a little too respectful for Michael Pittman. I'm a Michael Pittman believer, but why does, why does he for four people? Come on. Uh, both the Niners guys, most m- must starts. DK must start versus uh, Philly's weak-ass secondary. They give up the most fantasy points to wide receivers. Rashi Rice, let's talk about him. I'm a little higher on him the most. Rashi Rice is my fantasy playoff winner. He's my league winner. I predict. He's actually an alpha wide receiver in the NFL. It doesn't matter. If the Chiefs treat him like one, that's enough when you have the best quarterback in the league. And the good news is, this isn't just coming out of fucking thin air. Past three weeks, Rashi's Rice snaps have gone up. He hit over 80% of snaps in week 14. That is a key mark. Eight, over 80% because all season, he didn't have a single other game above 70. So he took a lead and they are believing in him. And I think for the final weeks of the season, they are going to rely on him more and more, especially with Kadarius Tony just fucking up left and right. Rashi Rice, I don't think he's this alpha, but I think he's enough to where the Chiefs got to try and lean on him and they're going to give him the shot. And, and I'm going to take it. He's gotten eight. I think he's gotten like nine ten and eight targets the past three weeks rashi rice man that's that's my uh he's my winner he's my fantasy playoffs winner i don't even have him in redraft leagues i got him in dynasty but i believe in him uh Cortland sutton it's kind of like kind of like gus edwards where if he doesn't score he's probably worthless he's probably gonna get you like three catches for 48 yards and you're like great i have seven points in the fantasy playoffs however Cortland sutton scores all right through 14 weeks, he has 10 touchdowns. That's pretty goddamn good. That's a very strong hit rate. It's not something I like cross my fingers on, but I say that every week. If you've been watching me every week, I say that every week. I don't want to cross my fingers on Sutton, but he proves me wrong. I'm giving him the wide receiver to respect. See what the hell he does. Jamar Chase, every week, I, I'm i dead on about him. The next week, I'm dead wrong about him. The third week, I'm spot on to where I originally would have been. I'm like... Swinging the pendulum way too far and right, trying to nail Jamar Chase's spot. So I'm just coming in the middle, all right? I'm not being stubborn and put him outside the top 30 like I had him, but I'm not going to put him in the top 12 like everyone else does. I'm going to stay right in the middle and keep him as a wide receiver too because you know the risk you're taking with Jamar Chase and a backup QB. Whether or not Jake Browning's winning, whether or not he had a monster game with Jamar Chase one time, you're still dealing with a backup quarterback. There's always going to be some risk at hand. Calvin Ridley. Let's wrap. Uh, let's rant about him real quick. And, and the Jags as a whole, we could throw in Evan Ingram and Zay Jones. And in this conversation, look, all three of those guys had double-digit targets. Were they great with them? I mean, Evan Ingram was cooking last week, but Ridley and Jones didn't do anything insane. We're like, oh my god, they're they're here. But the volume is there, so I I don't mind playing them. I don't mind Calvin Ridley as a wide receiver too. Baltimore's a very tough matchup, so I'm not gonna say he's like this top 20 must start no matter what. But he is worth being in your lineup so long as Christian Kirk is still out. He's got to probably go deal with Marlon Humphrey, who's a low-key a friend of a friend of a friend of BDG. Not, not to brag, but I know someone that knows someone that knows Marlon Humphrey. Not trying to brag, but do you know someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows Marlon Humphrey? Probably not. So, Jags, tough matchup, but the volume is there. Kind of like a fucking Zach Moss, unfortunately. Like, good input. We'll see what the output is. Brandon Cooks, you know what you're getting. Probably four catches, 40 yards with a 50% chance at a touchdown. He's kind of like knockoff court and something with a little more, a little more yak potential. Drake London, it's hard for me to, I'm not going to overreact. Dude bald, okay? Doesn't run through a hell of a chunk of yards, but I'm not going to overreact too, too much. They've paced the Bucks defense, who's Swiss cheese in the pass game. Panthers though, Panthers low-key have a top five pass defense. People want to admit it or not, I'll, I'll, uh,
a little bit. I'm still believing in the fact that he's a wide receiver one of this Arizona's Cardinals offense, and I think it's going to be positive game script against the San Francisco 49ers. They're going to be trailing and need to throw the ball. Packers wide receivers, we get, I know I'm going out of order, but I'm just fucking yapping. I'm going with where my where my groove's taking me. Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs are both playable. I'm obviously taking Reed over Dobbs, even though you know sometimes he doesn't do much in the passing game, and he makes up for it in the goddamn end arounds he's getting. Christian Watson's going to be out again, more like definitely. Oh, they yeah, they play Tampa, who's got Swiss cheese, and they just gave up X amount of yards to Drake London. I'm in on the Packers. Romeo Dobbs is not as high as Jaden Reed, and I don't even know if I'll have Romeo Dobbs in the top 35. It'll be close by the time. He'll, he'll be in there, but I don't, I don't even have a but. But they're both good, all right? I don't even know why I'm trying to counteract myself. I believe in them. I'll put the stamp down. I'll put my 10 toes down and say I'm in on the Packers, and I'm not backing out. Uh, quick rip. These three wide receivers kind of suck ass, and there's a good chance you that are watching is probably going to have to decide if you want to play them. It's not that the wide receivers suck, their situations suck, or maybe they do suck. Deontay Johnson, Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin. It's not great. Cooper, Amari Cooper is still a good wide receiver, and he got a shit ton of work from Joe Flacco last week, but he's not... If you've been watching Amari the last month, he just hasn't been clicking. He's just dropping the football. I don't I don't know. It's very unusual, Amari Cooper, but he's just straight up dropping the football, even if Joey Slings is out here. Deontay Johnson, he scored last week. He was able to survive in your fantasy lineup to be worth something, but it's not Mitch Trubisky isn't a bet. I want to take back-to-back weeks. And then Terry, Terry's just been dog shit. Nothing else to say there. I don't know what, like, he just sucks, okay? Even if Sam Howell is thrown for 400 goddamn yards a, a week, Oh my God. Sorry, God. I'm sorry you had to watch that. I just drank C4. That was, this is my cup. I just drank out of Nick's cup that had like old C4 in it. Horrible. Oh my God. All right. Finally. Yeah. So those three wide receivers, I guess I should give you some fucking context or opinion on them. I'm still going to bet on Amari. Okay. Joe's been slinging it the most. And Amari is just, I expect him to get out of the slump of dropping the football. It's not like he just forgot how to catch. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to count on him. He's coming off a big target game. I'm going to trust him. Deontay's going to be second, and then Terry's just been so bad, he's got to be third in that ranking. Uh, Two last guys, and then I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Gabe Davis, you know my logic. Flip the coin, that's on you. I'm not giving you an answer on what to do with Gabe Davis in the playoffs. I never have, even in the regular season. That's up to you when you want to play Gabe Davis, because that dude, it's up to him when he is pops off or his dog shit. And then one last player, I'm pumping the brakes on. Pump. Press him. Press him lightly. OBJ, what are we doing? I'm not going to jump in here and act like OBJ is back, and you shouldn't either, okay? He's been cooking. He's been nice. Let's still look at the stats. He has zero games with six catches, all right? Zero. There's not any game where you could just count on OBJ being a PPR monster. You're banking on him making some big, miraculous play, and has he done that recently? Yes, but I'm playing the odds here and saying he doesn't keep this up, okay? He's brittle. He's a little do. And we're jumping the gun a little bit, all right? I will say the Jags are a favorable matchup. They've been getting fucking sw swiped lately. But OBJ needs to be pumping the brakes. He's not even in the top 35. I'm not dissing him completely. He's in that 40 range, but he's not this must-start top 36, top flex play. That's all I'm saying. Don't fall in love. Don't get delusional. Don't get crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. Go to bdge.co to find my updated rankings on quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, everything, kickers. If there's a question that I did not answer in this video, and you need to win your lineup and win your week in week 15, hang.